Camelot 3000, uh, Michael Barr, Brian Boland, very excited to talk to you guys about this today. We're going to do a deep dive. We're going to dive into this. We're going to talk about theme, story, and plot, okay? We're going to break all this down. I feel like a lot of my videos have been about the art. Now, I know it's called the art of comics, but the art of comics is more than just drawing and coloring. It's, it's also about story. Right, it's about telling the story together, putting it all together. This whole thing we call storytelling, right, which is the ability to combine pictures and words together and create some kind of narrative. So, in this video, I really want to dive into that whole idea of storytelling and talk about the plot, the story, the theme, what all those things mean, and how it's important. And this will be uh, this. I'm going to continue doing this from now on. And not in the five minute short videos, but in these longer videos, really go into the deconstruct this and talk about um, why it's important or, or how he did it or why he did it this way. So we'll start with just chatting a little bit about Michael Barr and Brian Boland. This really put kind of Brian Boland on the map. Uh, he had done some stuff before this, but I think this is the work that um, the editors originally was somebody else. I think that we're gonna have, um, da, da, da. I can't remember who he mentions. He mentions that there was gonna be another uh, artist on here and then Brian Boland came into the picture and um, Brian Boland is British. Uh, so there's a little bit of like countryman element to the story, you know, being, you know, King Arthur, Camelot. And um, Brian Boland had done some work, I think for Warrior uh, but he wasn't like a well-known guy. This really put him on the map. Now remember, this book, which came out I think in 85, it was 85 or 84, da, da, da. It says 83, 84, 85, 12 issues. This is the first maxi series, okay? This is before Crisis. This is the first maxi series comic. This is also the first comic directly sold to the direct market, okay? So this is the first direct market exclusive. It's kind of a mature kind of title elements. There's like some issues in here that the normal like code wouldn't necessarily have. And so it's direct market. It's the first maxi series. They put a lot of like emphasis on the story. I guess the story originally was called Pendragon and Michael Barr had this in the back of his mind or he's trying to get this made, potentially a novel for a long time. And then he finally, he was an editor at DC he jumped out of being an editor and became a writer, and he wrote this 12, 12 issue series. And um, they got Michael, they got, excuse me, um, Brian Bolton attached to it, and they started off to the races. And um, there are a couple different inkers here. Normally, Brian would do all his inking himself, but because of time constraint and everything, they kind of had to parse it out. So Terry Austin, uh, Dick Gordiano did it, um, and Bruce Patterson did the first six issues. So um, let's talk a little bit about the story theme and plot of this story. And then we'll kind of do a dive and we'll like look at all this as we kind of piece it together. Okay, so when we talk about story, we're talking about what happens, right? So this is the synopsis. This is the log line. This is the, the simple what happens. Theme would be why it happens and the plot would be how it happens, right? The actual plot. So when we talk about story, you know, that's like what's happening? What's this about? And really what we're talking about is this, the Arthurian legends, right? So Camelot, King Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table, all those, those are, th those are the legends that are being retold. So the story is basically far into the future, in the year 3000, the Arthur and all those characters are reincarnated. They come back into existence. And they find themselves in the middle of a intergalactic war with Earth and this alien race that is invading them. And they're in the middle of this big intergalactic con you know, conflict from the 10th planet in the solar system past Pluto. And they are 
in the middle of this war, they come back reincarnated, and now instead of defending um, Britain, they're now defending the Earth. So it's kind of retelling, uh, reincarnating those, those mythologies, those dilemmas, and now in a futuristic way, right? Um, that's like, that's the elevator pitch. King Arthur in the future, okay? Boom, what is that about? Now, so the struggle is, you know, there's inter intergalactic conflict, they gotta save the planet, okay? Now, along with Merlin and Arthur and Perse Percival and all those characters, Tristan, all those characters, you also have the evil character, right? So you have Mordred, his son, you have Morgan Le Fay, you know, so you have those as well. So good and evil, all those kind of characters are reincarnated. That's the, that's the pitch, that's the story, that's, that's, that's what happens. Now the theme is kind of more in depth. That is like, the theme is why is this happening? Why is this important? What are the meanings? What's the motivation? And these themes of this, this book are very similar to the original themes in the King Arthur story. So those who are unfamiliar with those themes, this will be fresh. Now, those who know those themes through popular culture, or different movies or books, then they'll seem very familiar, right? They still keep intact the, the love triangle between Arthur, his wife Guinevere, and Lancelot, okay? So we still have that a dilemma. Um, we still have these dilemmas that Tristan had, that Percival had. We have the dilemma of Arthur and his son Mordred, who betrays him. The, the dilemma of Merlin and Morgan Le Fay and how they battle for supremacy of the magical, you know, world. So a lot of those, like, things that are familiar with the older life in this reincarnated world, they're still battling with, but they're twisted in some way. They're a little slightly changed. For instance, one of the themes of the book is this idea of accepting yourself or being able to realize that um, your situation that you're in now is what it is. Uh, for instance, Tristan is a character who now reincarnated into a woman. And so there's this element of, um, you know, being completely dissatisfied with the fact that you're now a woman. And she, he, it's, it gets confusing the pronouns because it's like it is a guy, but now she's a woman. Um, he wants to get his masculinity back and leave the female body like his old life, and so he can find the love of his wife, you know, girl. And so he, you know, wants to make a deal with the devil, aka Morgan Le Fay, who says, "Okay, if you betray the team, if you betray Arthur, I'll turn you back into a man like you were in your previous life." and then you can love the girl. Well, the girl will love him either way, right? But she doesn't want to be a lesbian. She doesn't want to be a woman. She wants to be a man, to feel the love of a woman as a man, right? And so there's that kind of like element. Now this was in 83, 84. This kind of idea of bisexuality or uh, transsexual, those kind of like things were kind of new-ish and definitely in comics weren't popular and so um, you get a little bit of that even though she's a heterosexual guy because she's drawn as a woman because she's a woman now then I guess that's gay you know it's kind of weird because it's it's science fiction but <laughs> um, so there's those themes of like the parallelism from the past now in the future but now I'm in different circumstances like Percival's now this like Frankensteinian you know Gollum character and he's trying to like how does he get out of this like crazy body right um, you have other characters like Galad who's like misses his family and he doesn't really this little adventure quest is fine but he wants to go back to Africa where his family is and so he misses them and and so there's con they create conflict to kind of keep him active in the engagement so there's there's these themes of like finding your identity I would say and kind of owning it, you know, making the best of it, so to speak. And uh, then of course of betrayal and love and all those big, big themes that we see in these kind of Arthurian mythology kind of stories, uh, betrayal and, and love and, and, and 
honor and valor and stuff like that. And Arthur, really, he's more of a cipher. He's he's just the hero. He's you know his goal, of course, is to save the world and the planet. Um, you know, there is the there's elements where he has to, you know, uh, kill his brother when he find, we find out the brother um, betrays the the team. And so there's some there's some heavy elements there, but but he's pretty much, you know, the the hero of the story. There now they add a new character called Thomas, becomes Sir Thomas. He's like us. He's uh, from the future, and he's the one that starts this off. This whole idea of reincarnating or uncovering the um, the spirits. So he he kind of accidentally awakens Arthur and then that kind of like spurs on the you know after Arthur is Merlin and then it kind of like goes on there Merlin is really a side character in this he he is just kind of a plot device uh, meaning he really doesn't have much of a character his just action is to move the plot forward so he is just a plot device to say okay th I'm gonna use these powers to kind of initiate the the sequence of events to move the plot forward and he doesn't really do much. He gets kind of put in the back burner there because he gets kind of captured. Uh, there's a little moment where Arthur, excuse me, where Merlin, we get a little taste of his past with uh, a, a lost love, but that's pretty much it. There's there's actually a little bit more story with Morgan Le Fay and Mordred because we get a chance to see them and their side and their machinations that they're doing with the world governments. And so we see a little bit of that. Let's go ahead and talk about the plot. And that will be actually the things that happen. Plot is how it happens. Uh, and we'll look at on the comic and down the camera. So let's flip it over and just take a look as we dive into this. Okay guys, now we're gonna move into the plot and talk a little bit about the story itself. Um, and we'll talk about Bolin, of course, now that we're looking at the book. Uh, again, DC Comics, first maxi series, uh, this is 20 bucks. This is a great, great book, by the way, you guys. I think it's, it is considered a classic. It is widely acclaimed, uh, not only for the art, the story, and for the times. Those who say it's dated, I say you need to reject that. <laughs> reject those thoughts that is dated and see this as just great first draftsmanship of Boland the colors, the flat colors, I love. You gotta give that up if that's an issue for you. And just read this as just a really fun kind of sci-fi story told in the future with these characters that are mythical and eternal. And that's, that's another kind of theme and idea of this eternal aspect. And the last page even clarifies that, solidifies that concept even more, that these people, these kind of spirits or icons reverberate through the eons, okay? And that there'll always be kind of an, an Arthur of some of some sort, right? And there'll always be a Merlin and a Lancelot and, and conversely, a Morgan Le Fay. Okay, so we gotta talk about Bolin. And this starts us off when I was talking about, we get this war right in the middle of this intergalactic conflict, there's invading aliens, they've got these like, lumbar vertebrae, you know, spaceships that clearly Brian used as modeling <laughs> some skeletal pieces, which is fine. Thomas's uh, parents die right off the bat and becomes an orphan and this kind of starts this all off. So he doesn't have a family. And when he's being chased down, and we get, it's kind of strange. I don't know why we do this, but he f goes from here. And then we flip this one page in France with, um, uh, with Lancelot who, his former life, or his current life, would be called Jules Futrede. I don't know if that's right how you pronounce it, but uh, Jules will become Lancelot in a moment, but I don't know why they put this one page right here in the middle, breaking this up, it just seems odd, but. Let's talk about Brian Boland and how much of a draftsman he is, and like, the stuff he did. This was a while back. He is just really great at composing things, drapery, anatomy, it's on point. Um, 
he's he's good stuff. We're gonna see some just amazing, like especially the bigger stuff, the the more splashy page stuff. It's really great. Now you might think like, oh, it's kind of simple and all, but it actually, if you just break this down, is pretty freaking good. This here, the 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 pers the angle of this face, the cash the shadow here, the cast shadow behind with the rocks and the tomb when he awakens him is really great. This is just really freaking good stuff. So this is this is the best of the best. Okay, so we have um okay, I mean look at this. Just I'm going to just shh, little pop little moments. Love this face. I love this right here. This is just really great. Crown looks good. Just the right amount of detail. He puts just the right amount of lines, you know, to show stuff. Um, would look good in black and white too, let me tell you. Would look good. And you know what? Maybe if you recolored it, it'd be kind of cool. I don't know. I like the, the old school, but I can see you wanting to kind of jazz up the colors a bit, perhaps. Um, this is Guinevere, who at this, in this future, uh, she is like a military kind of leader, commander of some sort. And so she will become Guinevere, which is interesting because she's like a warrior, uh, which I don't believe she was in the original story. They go to Stonehenge, and that's where they unlock uh, Merlin. And we're gonna show how Merlin then, uh, this is a great image here. Merlin comes into the story. And he is then, again, like I mentioned before, he's the plot device. He then will then unlock the next series of events, which the first will be getting Excalibur. So that's critical. So Lady of the Lake comes out of this vat of sludge. He gets Excalibur. And, uh, and that's actually, um, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's right. She comes out, the sword doesn't go to him though. It appears, which I don't really quite get why, it appears here at, in the beginning of, in the middle of the, um, the United Nations, um, you know, assembly hall. So, look at this, isn't this great? Many are called, but few are chosen. That's a great, great line. Great little, little big Ben shot here. The clothing, the costuming is kind of interesting, you know. It's a, it's a tricky because he's having to. Here's Percival, going to be one of the these like uh, golem like people that were former prisoners to you, be used by the state to control people. It's like law enforcement or enforcers of some sort. Um, the costumes is tricky because you know he put this far into the future, three thousand year. And yet he also wants to kind of keep the iconic, you know, clothing. So that little meld of futuristic and yet still still this kind of, um, you know, medieval clothing is a tricky, a tricky thing. So I think he does a pretty, pretty good job doing it. And this is the moment where when he gets um, Excalibur, these little bursts of energy go out into the universe. And those bursts of energy are what's going to seek out the souls or bodies of the of the knights of, of the round table. And so one goes to Guinevere, one's going to go to Lancelot, and Tristan, Tristan, and so forth. So and they go to her. This is great stuff. It's it looks simple, but it's actually quite complex. Like just this. Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, he's just like, here, you're my wife. And then, boom, you know, the, we get some flashbacks. See some great stuff. Of course, there's Lancelot. And what's what's interesting is that whole idea, again, of the eternity and how, in a way, maybe they don't have agency. I mean, maybe that's what this is talking to about agency because they still repeat the same complications. They know that there's this third person in their relationship, that Lancelot's gonna come in, and that and that this French guy, who's really now Lancelot, is going to come in and disrupt this. And despite all best efforts, that does happen. And so that, that does beg a question, right? Here's, and Lancelot loves Arthur and would do anything for him, but 
um, he loves this freaking blonde chick. And so it's, it's this here. And there's this, you know, he sees it. He knows what's going to happen. The triangle still exists then. How pitiful for them. <gasps> Morgan Le Fay. And so Morgan Le, F Le Fay is now involved in this story. The half-brother, or half-sister, rather, of Arthur. Uh, this is good stuff. I like all this. And here's uh, some exposition, you know. That's what he's basically, that's what his job is. Uh, it would be interesting just to have like a, just one more issue or just really get into him more, but the story doesn't have time, even though it's 12 issues, to really do much with him. So now they're getting the, the band back together. Of course, look, there's still some hugs, and the king, you know, senses it, sees it. She's loving it, though. She's got her little, like, palantir. She's watching this whole thing. Bye. And uh, Thomas is now kind of part of the crew as a novice squire, so to speak, and kind of learning the, the ropes. But this kind of interesting costuming, you know? It's like, it's it's a set of armor. It's like a plate mail, but it's also kind of different and sci-fi-ish. And then she's got this kind of like armor, but kind of sexy stuff and a weird little star tiara thing and so it's kind of a it's a hard thing to do the costume design for something like this but I think it's interesting and different it does feel it does feel a little like 80s superhero stuff I'll, so I'll give you that but I don't think that's wrong here's Percival here's Percival getting um, turned into one of these these kind of monsters which is super sad and he goes through his arc. And here's another character um, in Japan. So they're not all kind of British. Here's a character like from Japan that is uh, part of this. Galahad, right? So Galahad is there. And he's got this kind of like a death wish, um, which I'm not sure. Comment below if, if that's something because I wasn't sure about Galahad having that in the in the original tales, but he must have. I don't think they would just put this in here for nothing. They get these little like amulets, these little sword amulets that uh, that Merlin gives them as a way of protection from Morgan Le Fay's witching powers. Oh, and here's Tristan. Here's the character that I think is most interesting in some ways and pivotal because this is the character that has got that like issue of it's the spirit or soul of a man, but now it's being reincarnated into this woman who doesn't have feelings for this guy because it's a, a man's soul, uh, and the man's soul wants a woman, but yet her body is a woman's body, so it doesn't feel right, you know? And and um, so this this character of Tristan really has some some evolution that it goes through and there will be some kind of betrayal as well, or potential betrayal. Here's like the world leaders and how they're corrupt, and it's kind of a fun little shot there, what they're up to. There's Mordred. Uh, we don't know it's Mordred quite yet. We just right now think it's just uh, Jordan Matthew, but we'll find out soon enough it is Mordred. So we get some more characters. We get Sir Kay, who's actually the, the brother of, uh, of King Arthur. There's Tristan with her new kind of um, tomboyish haircut, I guess. A kind of very 80s, kind of classic Joan Jett type of deal. We are strong. Arctic, Arctic. That's a great video. Um, Love is a battlefield. This is a great shot. So this is just kind of fun. Look at the just look at these great ink lines here. This is hard to do. It's not that easy pull this out and not screw it up. Great inking, really fun. We get some space battles, you know, they're doing their battles. Uh, they move forward. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to defeat these aliens that are attacking. And we get more of Morgan Le Fay. This is actually, this really kind of shows his ability to draw the female and draw it in such a way that is, is attractive, simple, Great faces, both of these these lips, those eyes, really great. A little sense of evilness to it. 
which is which is a great position of that hand. Yeah, really nice, really nice stuff. And I like the. And this is kind of classic. Uh, Bolin that we see, you know, he'll you'll know Bolin probably most most than anything of um, Killing Joke is his big kind of claim to fame, and he's done a lot of covers for like Invisibles and things like that later on in his career. Uh, and now he's he's even just, Tristan is now just dressing up like a guy. He's just like I'm a dude, just suck it up, and uh, and that's what I am we see that she's been kind of cursed when she got resurrected uh, on this planet of aliens. Uh, she kind of went into this vat of, of magical properties to give her powers, and then she got kind of this um, contagious disease kind of thing on her, which gives her some anxiety. We get a little bit of her history. We learn a little bit about her, and, and she tells a story again. I just spoiled it, but then she told the story about getting her powers and then seeing that this uh, kind of connected her. So there's a little bit of like some slight nudity, things like that, that was pretty risque. Um, you know, this was not the same type of comic as a Superman or a Batman. There's definitely some elements when we get to Tristan's love life. Well, oh, here we go. Just as, so. What am I to do, Merlin? They romance just as before. And he says, not as before. What do you mean not as before? For I'm the king. Is she not the queen? You are the king, yes. But she is not the queen. There's been no wedding. And so he's kind of putting in the, the idea of, okay, you got to marry her. Right? Um, they're kind of getting it on. So they're going to have a wedding. This is reminiscent of that uh, crisis image, actually. But I think, but this, I'm assuming this came out after Crisis number six or seven or whatever by uh, George Perez. I could be wrong, but it's got, it's got to. It's got to come after that. I can't, I can't imagine it. Here's where Morgan Le Fay kind of tempts, her, tempts Tristan to become a guy. He's like, okay, you betray her and you'll get this woman. Your old, remember your old girl? You'll get her. You'll get her back. Again, it's about love, right? It's about like being content with your your situation and them not. And they're like, look, I gotta do what I have to do. So I'm gonna do this so I can become a man again and be powerful and, and you know be normal. Just not comfortable like this. I totally would get that. It would freak me out, right? Meanwhile, we get actually that girl's reincarnated into her. And so she comes into play and they kind of, we get a little bit of the political issues here. The marriage, Mary Guinevere, but what happens? Gets shot, doesn't get killed, but there's kind of a would-be assassin. And uh, there's kind of those aliens, kind of shape-shifting alien. And it was the guy who was gonna marry her, marry Tristan, and he's kind of a shape-shifter-y blobby dude. And now we see Tristan with uh, Isold, is that Isold? I, I sold it. I don't know how you say that. Uh, I sold it, and uh, that, no, it's you. And then, what are we gonna do? It's a great shot, by the way. That's that's great too. Um, they kiss. This was big, so I guess you can consider a lesbian kiss with two girls. But he's really a guy. I don't know. It's kind of weird, right? So, but it's a great image. And this was like super kind of powerful back then, right? Still is. Uh, and she's like, no, I want to. And I hate myself for it. Was I so evil in my first life? What did I do to deserve this? You know? And she's like, no, it's just, listen, it's you. It's your heart. It doesn't matter. Um, well, she gets, she winds up attempting to betray. They do find think it's her it's not her it actually was Kay and um, there's a bit of a ruse there because the sword really doesn't tell you if you betray it was just something King Arthur said to kind of trick them all which I found pretty pretty fascinating there was a big gap in these last issues there were the, the comic got kind of pushed back 
I think the art took longer than they expected. And so because of that, um, there was some there were some delays in the, the publication of the last issues, uh, which you see a lot in, in some things like, you know, Infinity Gauntlet, stuff like that, you'll see those kind of issues. Heck, Infinity Gauntlet switched artists, right? It was, I think Liam Sharp did some of the last issues, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they are gonna go now to the planet. They're gonna do a big, uh, a big battle on the 10th planet. They, um, Oh, this is great. I love these covers. This is the U.S. kind of leader. Look at the White House with all the machinery. There's Betrayal, Morgan Le Fay, and Mordred. And Mordred now has the, the Holy Grail. That was part of the story I skipped over, too. One of the plot points is they go get the Holy Grail to save Thomas, who Sir Thomas got injured, and so they try to get the Holy Grail. So they're trying to hit all those beats from that Arthurian legend. Uh, but Mordred got it first. And so he actually kind of turns it into a suit of armor, so it kind of protects him. Tristan using his sexuality against them, uh, not to his liking. They go on the alien planet, and then they're getting ready for the big battle. There's like Mark Maffei's like a castle. So here's the end where we uh, have the battle. I wanted to get to that Tristan element because there is this, by the way, there also is an element of Tristan is kind of in love with, excuse me, Thomas is kind of in love with Tristan, right? So again, another love triangle. But he loves her, but she's not a girl. It's a guy, right? So he has no interest in the guy. I mean, he, he wants girls. He's a dude inside, so. Um, and Thomas doesn't really get that. He's like, you're great the way you are, you know? They do some battle in here. That's a great image, too. All these last ones are. Long live the king. He's like, you still want, want to get together? She's like, no, dude. I'm not going to get with you. Just deal with it. Um, but there's this moment where, at the end, after they... They save the day, save the universe, you know, save Merlin. He's back. She, um, they still, like, it's not working for her. It's like, right? It's like, I still want to be a guy. And then they kind of reminisce about their past life and how there's this place in France and they had this romance. And she sets it up to kind of, to replicate that moment. And then I guess in that moment, she... She relents. She she says, "Okay, it's not what's outside; it's what's inside that matters." Type of a deal. It's still seen as a lesbian story, even though it is a guy. It's kind of it's again it's it's a little complicated, uh, <laughs> and I'm probably not equipped to talk too much more than that about it. Um, these two wind up having a kid, which is interesting. I don't know if that happens in the story, and that's it. Now, and this is why these last two pages is why we're going to go back to that element of this is eternal because at the very end on a alien planet you have this alien and there's a sword and it draws the sword out of the stone and there you go and the road goes on ever on so this idea that the legend continues through eons through space and time uh, it's kind of fascinating, and I thought that was like really cool. To, this idea, you know, of of that, and uh, so there you go. Here's some of the covers. Of the originals, kind of fun. This I mean, I missed that old DC logo. So there you go. I think this is a great, great comic. It's very fun. It's got some great ideas in it, and uh, there you go. So thanks for watching. More videos are coming up in a couple days. So uh, check out my Patreon for my own comics. You can see what I do for $1. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Thanks. Bye.